What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the blue color playing as Loki. His name is Albert Wesker. You might know him better as Thomas Shelby, but we will be referring to him, to him as Wesker now. He's decided to maybe stick with the name. I don't know. His opponent today in the red color playing as Odin. His name is Rapple. And this is the first game of the mega or the competitive mega random tournament. One thousand dollar prize pool. This is the group stage. The group stage, it's groups of four or five, top two players go through to the main event bracket. The losers will go into a loser bracket, so nobody gets kicked out after the group stages. Everyone gets their shot at the single elimination stage. There's a small prize for the losers bracket, but a huge amount of glory to come to those who win that main event. Lots of exciting things to happen if you guys are interested in what the brackets are looking like. There is a little image that I posted for the community on YouTube. It's also on the Discord if you want to join over there and see the updates in real time. It's going to be a very fun time for sure. Uh, we are obviously going to be playing on Mega Random every single time here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have got what seems to me to be a very similar spawn to borderlands with the forest in the middle cutting off the map in the middle and good hunt starting i'm interested to see what these players are going to decide to do in the early game here if it's going to be some sort of attempt at a rush or or a, an extra ulf sark or something now you do have to remember these players can only oh, i mean this is a best of three but the players can only win with one god once so if the victor of this game say rapple wins this game uh he will not be able to play odin again and our main man wesker will be able to play loki again if he wins so you have to win two games which means two separate gods at this stage you need to be fairly confident with. So we'll see how these guys are going to do in this matchup. Norse Mirror, Norse Mirror in a way, Loki versus Odin. It's actually a really, really challenging matchup for both players. You've got to hit very specific timings in a way, very specific timings to make sure that for the Loki, to make sure you can get the advantages where they come. And that's within flaming weapons timings on second gold mines to avoid frosts and all that other stuff. And same too, does the Odin player need to make sure that he hits his frost timing, not fighting too much in the early game, maybe fighting too much in the early game if he's going for that sort of play style. But the idea being you have to get the frost before the flaming weapons gets clicked. So that needs to be a big part of the game plan. Now, moving along here, if both players not really checking the map out too nicely here, as I move around and see, it's a very, very low hunt map here. Uh, a lot of hunt in the main base, but not much else here. So... One of the things that you will find on Mega Random is that you can get hunt maps as high hunt count as, say, like a marsh and as low as an oasis. So you can get those those maps with only 1,000 food. Uh, and we'll see how it's going to go as the ravens are just going to be scouting all around. He does spot these two deer. It is only two deer. A lot of the times it's not worth it to take the risk to move out onto this second uh, location over over here because there's only 300 food and we'll see how they're going to go we are seeing that uh wesker here also known as thomas shelby for those of you just tuning in now thomas shelby is wesker having to jump onto the berries so he's already having a bit of a rough start here uh missing a house as well as this herser is at 99 percent. we are seeing four city come through uh, for Wesker and Rappel going through Freya, dropping down both of his longhouses straight away. Slight population lead for Rappel, slight food advantage for Rappel as well, as he's got his five villagers on the food. He's got himself five villagers on wood for dwarves on gold. Interestingly, he's got his dwarf over here on food as well. A bit confused about that one, but he might move that elsewhere a little bit later. 
as the relics have been grabbed here by Mr. Wesker here. He's getting himself Canopic Jar of Imsa. It's actually a really big relic for Loki, who's already got some advantages in the early game from his Longhouse uh, advantage here. If we take a quick look at, at this, not the scrailing, if we take a quick look at the, the, uh, the Hursa here, he trains faster. It's about 10% faster, I believe. I can't actually see. There we go. 10% uh, faster. So then you get the extra 15% faster. So these Hursa are actually coming out of the longhouse very, very quickly here. I think they're considered, uh, considered infantry. I think they're considered infantry. They might not be, but Wesker's got to be happy here. Uh, so there's also the flagstone of Buhan over here with the extra, the cheaper walls, negative 25%. On the wall costs, as we are seeing the Hursa making their way over here. Going to be checking out where potential uh, red villages are. Definitely want to find something to target down. As we do see a cheeky forest fire getting thrown down onto this location. No villager kills uh, just yet here as Wesker is building his way up to Hall of Thanes. That force set a unique technology which allows his Hursa to zoom around the map. And we will be seeing the uh, house getting torn to pieces here. As the raiding cavalry coming around, they just kind of and move these guys away. You don't want to lose too much HP here, but just a little bit of uh, of shenanigans and away from Rappel trying to bait the Hursa in. But he keeps the house alive, takes a little bit of damage, gets a little bit of favor for Wesker. Wesker's going to be getting himself the Hall of Thanes here, as Rappel is also taking the advantage by trying to take down this house in the bottom right corner here. Uh, and the game will continue. We'll see if Rappel's going to finish the house off, as he does not decide he wants to. One HP remaining. He trades an Ulfsark for a house there. It's got to be fairly happy. you got to be fairly happy if you're... Uh, if you're Wesker there to get the old Sark kill trading for a, for a house, 40 wood versus 80 ish resources there from Rappel. As the Hurst are going to be swinging around the top side of the map here, looking to hit these villages on the wood. Rappel is in position to defend it, but all of his infantry currently building a house. And he's going to take a couple of hits here on these villages as they do immediately retreat away. The throwing Axemen's not going to be able to hit these Hursa too easily, though, as the Hursa do retreat away. Meanwhile, Raining Cavalry circling around Albert Wesker's base, looking for something to take out. There are a handful of pigs remaining here, which is going to make it very, very tough for Wesker to get to the heroic age that he really needs to do. Once Loki gets to the heroic age, he can start going more into like pure gold economy, uh, buying food, for example, from the market uh, and, and just building dwarves. It's a very, very sensible and strong strategy to keep the timing attack nature of Loki alive. As we do see these raiding cavalry trying to snipe down a Hursa. Not going to be able to get it. Takes a little bit of damage on his raiding cavalry. And this Hursa will probably make his way over to the healing spring a little bit later here. As we see Wesker now looking back into the base of Rappel. Now Rappel's throwing up his armory. Has a decent amount of food in the bank. You can see he's only got a handful of pigs left. And he's actually cancelled all production here. So very smart from Rappel. He realizes he's only got a handful of food left. So he needs to make sure that before this gold mine ends, before his food runs out, you go to the Heroic Age. You don't want to be farming before clicking up to the Heroic Age here as Odin. It's a very, very important part of this matchup as the Hurts are going to be swinging around here onto these villages yet again. A nice play here from Wesker, finally getting some sort of uh, damage, real damage done onto Rappel. He doesn't manage to get a villager kill as Rappel reacts fast enough. Meanwhile, the raining cavalry take out a house over here and the Hursa have to leave. And the villagers get pulled off this over onto the chickens. Maybe going to come back over onto the wood here. Rappel's just about to click up. Wesker is in a similar position, but it looks like it looks like he's going to be running out of food here. Not quite. He might have enough food. He's got a Hursa in the bank here that he could cancel. And he probably does actually have enough food and he should cancel said Hursa here to advance off of these pigs that he has left. Only 100 food left. He builds the Hursa as well. We'll see if he's going to be uh, able to think need to get to the heroic age or decide to stay more in the classical age, build those farms and go from there uh, as he is slowly starting to drop those down here as the Hursa is getting closer and closer to completion. 
as the villagers dropped their food. He definitely could have advanced. He canceled that Hursa, but now he's got no food left in a difficult position. The dwarves making their way over onto this gold mine here. Hand axe coming through for Rappel as well, as all those food villagers make their way over onto wood. Rappel can now go into a full throwing axeman style army here uh, and start making his way effectively towards Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a big, big difficulty for Loki players to overcome. Uh, as we can see, look at the 786 food, just a little bit more necessary for West guys. He has the farms here, three villages, should be able to advance now. Uh, so not so far behind on that advance time, but definitely not going to be able to hit any timings uh, with his flaming weapons at all here. As a raiding cavalry swinging through here, might be able to actually block all of these raiding cavalry in here if he builds these walls in time, but it seems like not going to happen as uh, Wesker trying to throw these, or, or Wesker trying to throw these up, doesn't quite get it, does get a, a um, Iron Heyar spawn here, as now Wesker has the resources to advance, as more farms coming down, Bragi, the god of choice, no surprises there, the army of uh, Rappel just hanging out over here, thinking about what he wants to do, if I'm if I'm Rappel here, most of the time what I what I would do is just throw everyone onto gold and try and get Mythic Age, maybe get a second town center if I feel like I've got time. But that uh that advantage of having Frost in this matchup is so good because you can just you know that you've got at least until Fimble Winter that comes through to kind of sit back and do what you want. So we see the uh, Longhouse getting taken down here. As the Hursa moving in, they will see the throwing Axeman Hursa throwing this market up. So Wesker's definitely got an idea of what's coming for him. We'll see if he's going to have a, a something, somewhat of an idea as how to defend it. We can talk about where the gold mines are positioned now because it's not something we really talked about yet. There's not a whole lot of them. There seems to be four or three gold mines, three gold mines per player. Very, very uh, spread out gold mines as well as the... Villagers getting pulled off of this wood line as the Hurso do finally get the first villager kill here. Villager difference here is one villager lead for Rappel, which is, or two villager leads for Rappel, which is pretty good for a Loki player most of the time because he's normally just building dwarves. So Wesker is keeping up fairly nicely here as the population differential is just over 10. Raiding Cavalry come in, going to be hitting these villagers on, uh, on the wood line here. We'll be able to at least get one, I would assume. But nice reaction from Wesker to get away from this one, moving into the town center and seeing what he can do. We are seeing that Wesker is deciding here to go for a town center. So he knows probably not a whole lot of options here against Rappel's against Rappel's potential Mythic Age here. As the Throwing Axemen swing in here, the Hursa getting pulled back. These villagers doing uh, everything they can to get that gold income up for Rappel. Rappel's got a handful of farms here. Let's check out his economic upgrades as the Hursa are running around the back. He does have himself pickaxe. No, sorry, not pickaxe. He does have himself plow. No pickaxe. But the Hursa coming through will be able to snipe down one uh, Throwing Axemen. I love this kind of Loki play. You pick off a unit, you move on to the next... Uh, the next kind of stage here. Make sure you're dodging the enemy uh, Hursa and everything. And you should be okay. He takes a little bit more damage there, but hasn't lost any units. His Rappler's economy is getting closer and closer to that critical amount. Selling, uh, even selling some wood there to buy, uh, to get some more gold, get closer to the Mythic Age. As Rappel's game plan here is very, very sound. Uh, the Throwing Axemen, however, have been assembled here for Wesker. And we do have to remember that Wesker does have himself speedy Throwing Axemen to produce. So normally they take 16 seconds. If you take the 10% off, that's 1.6 seconds. You take the 15%, so 25% in total. You're looking at like... 13 second or 12 second throwing axemen to be getting trained here, which is a big deal considering how important they're going to be to deal with the opposing uh, opponent's uh, stuff here as we do see a pretty nice building block there from Rappel collecting a lot of those Hursa into that bundle. He loses two. Will he lose any more? It looks like he's not going to be as the Hursa get away. So nice try there from Rappel. Good reaction from uh, from Wesker to take down the Longhouse uh, form uh, foundation there and get back to heal up his Hursa. But Balda is now on the way. So what can Wesker do here? Best play 
most of the time when you know this is coming which is something that wesker should have somewhat of an idea is towers throw towers up on a gold mine get an ox cart over onto a separate gold mine over here over here probably not this one but sneak the uh sneak the other gold mine but smash everything you can onto this location here we are seeing a hill fort coming up as well as the settlement is getting taken down and take a looking at the the villagers that rappled and managed to assemble here he's only got 40 so that's 120 population worth of heroes of ragnarok which if where, ooh, this town center is not the one. If Wesker, if Wesker can get himself to like medium, sorry, heavy infantry here as well, he's going to be in a fantastic position. As we do see, the Mythic Age has come through. That's going to be fire giants there. The Rappel can build. Rappel doesn't necessarily have to build himself. Ragnarok here, I should say, but he has decided to. He's getting himself the town center. He hasn't built a single, uh, he hasn't built a single ox caravan as the units here for raffle moving in 200 population ragnarok little bit of resources in the bank getting himself huntress axe as well the uh the raiding cavalry in the back going to be moving through distracting the throwing axe and while the town center gets absolutely totaled here uh, and we will be seeing the raven sitting on this gold mine very smart from raffle he knows exactly what he needs to do here as the hearser pushing through or the heroes of ragnarok pushing through and albert worse Albert Wesker needs to retreat here, needs to get back into his base and think about what he can do here to continue. And he is indeed getting that heavy infantry. So it's going to be in a decent position here to continue throwing up a secondary hill fort. Two hill forts on this position are going to be helpful. There's, there is a very, very difficult problem that he's going to have to overcome, which is frost. The thing is, though, if Rappel clicks frost before flaming weapons, there's a very real chance here that uh, Wesker can defend. Now, has Wesker gotten himself Mason? Not just yet. He's not uh, researching. It's definitely something he should consider. And there is the big frost we were talking about. Hitting all of the dwarves, all of the army. Rappel's got himself 160 population remaining, but he does basically just need to get uh, pushed through here, in essence. We are seeing the fire giant getting taken out here from behind. Nice play uh, from uh, Wesker to get in there and clean that one up. He's got 45 HP, 33 HP, 20 HP remaining, 13 HP, and will get taken down. Wesker has got 129 population. Rappel's only got 150, so this is going to be close. The flaming weapons from Wesker is going to be very, very usable here. Uh, and I, I do think he should use it immediately in an effort to try and hold on uh, against this force that uh, Rappel has assembled. Not only that, bringing the dwarves in and trying to position them to fight could be a good idea here. No flaming weapons getting cast just yet. Bit of a mistake. The army of uh, of Rappel is collapsing onto the throwing axemen as all of the units do seemingly manage to push through here nicely. We do see that this gold mine has been snuck here by Wesker for just a little bit as the dwarves retreating away. The hero of Ragnarok on the tail there as Wesker drops down to 84 of 120 population i don't see a market just yet for wesker to be selling resources he could sell wood he could sell food for gold here as the heroes of ragnarok are going to be circling around the rest of these units can go straight for the main base of wesker wesker does have fortified town centers he's got himself proper weapons as well his armory not probably should have been thinking about getting himself something a little bit different there in the uh in the shape of what do you call it of copper mail as he does decide to click flaming weapons here pushing uh pushing rapple away giving himself a little bit more time in this game the dwarves going to be retreating away as they do make their way onto this gold mine i love that choice here from wesker but he does need to get his army in here to defend as the dwarves going to swing back around going to jump onto this gold mine. there's still 1800 gold left here as this game is incredibly close here as more houses going to be coming up and the units for uh, Rappel just gonna have to wait out this flaming weapons it seems before he comes in onto this location the throwing axeman coming over here to start defending as Rappel decides cannot make his way in there just yet he does have enough population now to start making villages so he's got eight villages now versus Wesker's 
58. So normally when the Ragnarok comes through for Odin against Loki, the big victory comes when you take out all of the villagers. But here, Wesker has managed to defend the push, defend the onslaught that is the Odin fast Ragnarok. As we do see the throwing axemen going after those heroes of Ragnarok very nicely. Uh, and Wesker pushing through. You'll see a bit of a raid coming in. Nice raid here, actually, from Rappel, picking off a lot of these villagers who are going to be retreating back into the town center. We see a troll spawn, not a spawn, but getting produced by Wesker to potentially take down some of those throwing axemen here or something. A little bit of a strange one, but he goes for it nonetheless. And now this fight here is heavily in the favor of Wesker because his throwing axemen mass is just too big for those uh, heroes of Ragnarok to really get onto. But the units here for Rappel still push and still getting some good damage done. We've got 13 villages for Rappel. He's just about finished up all of these farms. Doesn't have a whole lot left to go here as villagers on this gold mine over here, on these gold, this gold mine over here. Rappel's going to be retreating back and we might... I, I don't like the odds for Rappel here having only two town centers, not a lot of uh, resources in the bank, but we might be able to see Rappel bounce back from this so long as he doesn't lose his army too fast keeps putting pressure onto villagers keeps getting the raids uh the throwing axemen don't have a lot of pushing power so wesker's not got a whole lot of opportunity he, he can think about going to the mythic age here himself getting a nidhogg get, or, or even uh or even Fimble winter could be uh, very detrimental to rapples progress in this game but the army here from wesker getting very much out of position not paying attention uh but rapple decides not to engage here as he's going to be retreating away taking a lot of damage from these throwing axemen they're doing 5.85 damage per second onto these units and rapple has to come all the way back home we're seeing some fire giants coming out now for rapple a very very important unit to deal with these fire giants and we have seen this before if you get enough fire giants you're going to be able to deal with these throwing axemen very very nicely however in a weird way, the trolls are actually a decent counter to the fire giants. You see they deal 14.4 damage a second. They do 200% bonus damage against myth units. So you're actually looking at the deep you're actually looking at decent damage here as Rappel is trying to get a couple more fire giants out. If you can get a, a couple of splash damage uh, shots here from the fire giants onto those throwing axemen, it's gonna be enough to uh, kind of force Shelby or, or Wesker out here. Uh, but, I mean, villager differential is huge at this point. 24 to 51. As we see the dwarves over here getting sniped down. You cannot be losing units here. We are seeing some raids still coming through for Rappel as he's looking for villagers. But now the town center advantage is going the way of Wesker. He's trying to grab that for himself. The fire giant coming through onto this position, getting even more damage onto this spot here. Do we see another fire giant? Yes, we do. Three fire giant are going to be very, very scary here as we see the... Oh, we see the units starting to get very low in the HP. Four throwing axemen getting picked off there by these fire giant. But... Wesker is getting awfully close to the Mythic Age here, ladies and gentlemen, as we do see the units pushing in here, denying the town center from getting grabbed. 28 villages for Rappel, 53 for Wesker, as now the Fire Giants can push in and start taking these, uh, throwing Axel down. If you get those trolls to start targeting down the uh, Fire Giants, you can see they kind of deal damage. I take it all back. They're not that good against the Fire Giants. You do have to be careful, though. Don't want to fight for too long because the town center will be coming up and Rappel has to figure out how he's going to deal with a Mythic Age Loki, how he's going to deal with the three town centers, the 20 villager advantage that uh, Wesker has managed to amass here in this game with the extra town center. So that's going to shoot up even more. Where's the market? Does he have it? I don't see a market just yet. There it is. Throwing that market up. So definitely going to go to the next age. If I was Wesker here, doesn't really matter. Tier Bow, uh, tier or hell either or is going to be very very strong and we do see that hell is the option for uh for wesker in this game as the fire giant going to be wandering forward going to try and take down this uh this fortified town center if he can kill it that will be no town center remaining here for uh well no town center i should say not no town center i should say no mythic age incoming for Mr. 
Wesker. That's the. There's not really a good uh, a good answer to these fire giants here. As the special attack comes in, going to be hitting these throwing axes. We're getting a huge amount of damage done as the fire giants retreating back. Another big splash damage throw coming through. They have was it a 20 second cooldown, 15 second recharge time, and they're going to be able to absolutely clean those throwing axemen up but the fire giant's deciding to retreat here i definitely think he should keep pressing his advantage while he can but wesker's economy is starting to be very very scary as we're seeing this wall getting bashed through where the gold mining operation of rapple is currently happening the all of the throwing axemen getting very very uh, close to getting completely picked off here but 75 percent left in this town center i don't think that rapple's going to be able to kill it in time though potentially if he decides to attack it immediately here it's going to be close 15% of the way here. The Hursa, the heroes of Ragnarok coming in, taking this one down. 88%, 90% here. Very, very close. The town center is going down incredibly quickly. 95% here, 96%. It's going to be incredibly close, but it seems like the hell has managed to come through for Wesker in just the nick of time here. As Mason's got clicked there for Rapple, the army coming through, pushing off this gold mine. The Hursa sitting here looking like they've got a, not a lot that they can really do. Did... Did he lose those gold villages? It looks like he didn't. He moved them over onto the wood. He can come over onto this gold mine. That is Rapple. We're seeing this throwing axemen getting this town center up. So now we've got ourselves into an incredibly close, very, very strange middle late game situation here. Odin versus Loki. The Loki still has himself access to a mythic age god power in the nidhogg the odin player's got nothing left third town center coming up villager differential is about 20 but rapple does have himself 48 villagers there and we're seeing granite blood coming through for wesker that's a huge technology it costs a ton of favor a ton of wood but it pushes his fire giants up 200 hp each which makes them absolute tanks very difficult to deal with and now we see the dwarves on this gold mine over here as rapple realizes look if i can get a gold staff here can still win this game and he does have the army composition to make that happen he's still got a handful of those heroes of ragnarok as well as five fire giants even with granite blood only two fire giants not going to be enough here to defend as rapple moving in he spots the fire giants here we see the fire giants of rapple going straight after those throwing axemen and the throwing axemen not paying attention he does rapple does lose one fire giant there but there's a lot of low hp throwing axemen there as they are all getting taken out as wesker drops down a little bit of population he's at 151 of 160 population those still so big advantage here for wesker as wesker throwing up the market in the very corner of the map there is a wall here that wesker's gonna have to deal with uh but he knows he has to start a trade route and maybe uh rapple will be aware of it as well as this gold mine is getting moted down here with only 2000 gold left flood control coming through for wesker as he's trying to get all of his upgrades let's check out the armory upgrades for both of these players not a lot for rapple a decent ones for wesker but the fire giant advantage here is slowly going out the window for uh for Rapple is he's now at three fire giants apiece but remember we talked about that granite blood such an important upgrade there for Wesker as he's able to push through taking down those fire giants and Rapple is not able to control this one well enough as Wesker manages to clean up the majority of the fire giants gets the fire giant advantage here can start targeting down this town center we see fortified town centers coming through we've got some longhouses up over here a market getting thrown down but the town center going to be going down incredibly quickly meanwhile near Hog getting dropped onto the gold mine of Rapple. Rapple has to retreat here. The splash damage is going to come through, doing tons of damage onto these villagers here. And Wesker looking like he's able to start cleaning up the throwing, not the throwing axe, but the Hursa managed to take down another fire giant here as the fire giant pushed through and uh, they have to retreat, but he's really making it difficult. Uh, Albert Wesker is really making it difficult for Rapple to muster anything uh, of an army here as Wesker has to now move, or Rapple has to now move up to the top gold mine here, which is where the rest of the army is. Nice play from uh, Wesker here, throwing a longhouse over as well to cut the remaining uh, of Rapple's gold here. 
more fire giants wandering in for uh for Weskiri. doesn't have that rampage upgrade but it doesn't matter that much meanwhile the fire giants turning their uh attention over onto those villages there had the fire giants had their special they potentially could have killed every one of those villages in one second there as the special is so absurdly strong uh against bunched up units the Rappel has to retreat here, and we'll see. Will he go after this fortified town center? Uh, after that, he does have those those fire giants. He got five crush, fifteen uh, hack a second, so they do tons of damage. So the fire giants are wandering through here to try and finish off that fire giant, and he will be able to clean that one up very very quickly as the village is getting pulled off. Rappel's got himself the uh, does he have himself the upgrade? He does. So the fire giants, or not the fire giant, the Nidhogg taking some decent damage here from those uh, throwing axemen, but the villagers getting cleaned up is now Wesker's at 92 villagers. Rappel's at 48, and in that moment, Rappel does decide to tap out. GG, what a game here from from uh, Wesker to defend that ragnarok an incredibly strong uh display here from Wesker. he was able to push in and and well basically just defend it and it was it was a pretty insane hold normally that one town center rag play completely destroys loki's but a nice hold from Wesker. if you guys enjoyed this game please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtube hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game